Hey YouTube, welcome back to our Candles Cartel YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you guys how we make our 4 ounce candles in our black tins. So starting off, I do take them out of the individual packaging that they come in and then I will be showing you guys what the inside of the tins look like as well. I'll be making 17 candles with five different scents. These are our four ounce black tins. They are matte black on the outside and gold on the inside. Now that the jars have been unpackaged, I'm just going to go in with some paper towels, some warm water, and some soap to clean the tins on the inside to make sure there is no debris. Um, because this is acrylic paint on the outside, I don't want to use anything outside of just paper towel, water, and soap. I do normally use rubbing alcohol when I clean my glass jars, but because of the acrylic paint on the tins, I just want to go in with something that is less corrosive. Now I'm going to go in with the wick centering tools that I made. Um, I just made these in order to ensure that when I'm placing the wicks in my tins that they are centered to ensure when the candle is burning that it is a proper even burn. These are the wicks I'm going to be using today. They are crackling wooden wicks. I definitely love the effect and love the sound and they work very well with the wax that I use. So now I'm just prepping the wooden wicks by putting them into their metal tabs. I tried my best to do it on camera, but with wooden wicks, you do have to be a little bit more careful. But I'm just prepping them by putting them into the tabs. Now that the wicks are ready, I'm going to go ahead and place them on these double-sided wick tabs. That way they stick at the bottom of my tins and they don't move while the candle is burning. Here's a close-up shot of what it looks like when I'm placing the wick in the tins. And I'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process for all candles. Normally, I do this prep while the wax is melting already, but for video purposes, I wanted to do all of the prep first with the tins and then melt the wax. Now that the jars are all wicked up, I'm going to go ahead and move on to melting the wax. Unfortunately, I didn't film when I was actually putting the wax in my pitcher, but I did go ahead and move the camera up so you can see how much wax is in there before I put it in the melter. Once I've measured out how much wax I need for all 17 candles, I'm going to go ahead and put it in my wax melter. And I did put a little time lapse of the actual wax melting. So here I'm doing three candles at a time because all three of these candles are going to be the same scent. Um, I went ahead and measured out how much wax I'm going to need per three candles as well as how much fragrance oil I'm going to need. And I went ahead and put those in my mini pitcher and I'm going to go ahead and mix for two minutes. Make sure you are mixing for that period of time. And then I'm going to go ahead and pour them directly into the tins. 
So this is currently how I measure my fragrance load. I put the measurements on the screen. I just feel like it's what works best for me and the wax that I'm currently using. Because I've been making candles for a while now, I no longer weigh each candle as I'm pouring my wax. I know exactly how much to calculate um, to put in my mini pitcher to make sure that I have exactly enough to fill up all three candles. But if you are just starting out, I definitely recommend to weigh each candle. That way you make sure you get consistent wax in all of your, in all of your tins. After pouring, I normally set my candles to the side so they can set properly. Um, I only set them like this for video purposes, that way I can keep everything in frame. But I normally just set them over to the side and let them cool down. So here I'm just repeating the process once more. I have already have my melted wax as well as my fragrance oil and my mini pitcher. And I am just mixing. I'm really putting an emphasis on mixing because it is truly important. It's really what changed the game for my candles. I wasn't mixing enough before. And now that I've taken the time to mix for two minutes for every scent that I'm making, it really does make a difference with my hot throw. And I'm just showing you the bottom of the mini pitcher just to show you what it looks like um, when I'm done pouring. There literally is almost no wax left. I usually just have to go in with a paper towel, clean out any residue, and then it's ready to be used again. So once again, I'm going in and I am stirring my wax and my fragrance oil to make sure that it is properly binded together. I am going in for the full two minutes. I did have a timer on the side to make sure that I'm stirring um, for the allotted amount of time. And once that is all stirred, I'm going to go ahead and pour it into the tins, move them back so they are setting, and then move on to the next scent. Another thing I wanted to mention is that you do definitely want to make sure that you're measuring every fragrance oil that you're using um, because some fragrance oils are heavier and they do also tend to change the color of your wax. So you do definitely want to make sure that you're looking out for that. Um, some fragrance oils might be thinner, so it might require more. So you definitely just want to make sure that you're measuring every single batch that you're making to make sure that you're getting the right fragrance oil percentage in each of your candles. Another really good tip that I started incorporating after this video, which I might film when I do an updated candle video, but it is incorporating cheese cloths when pouring the wax into your jars, your tins, or your vessels. Um, basically, there is some dust and debris that we might not be able to see to the naked eye, and the cheese cloth just helps to capture that. And finally, now that all the candles have set, I did go ahead and start trimming the wicks. I did a test cut on the first three candles, and then I just proceeded to go ahead and cut the wicks as low as I can go. I do like to pre-trim the wicks for the customer. That way, it's just ready to burn for their first use, and also lets them know how low they should be trimming the wick on their own before they burn the candles. 
and that is it for today's youtube video thank you guys so much for tuning in and i truly hope that you learned something from watching today's video as always if you have any questions please feel free to leave them down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and here is the final look at the candles once they have all been trimmed